Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Brian. So this video, we're going to start down programming with a graphical interface. Notice I didn't say widgets. There's a reason for that. I'll cover that in just a second. But this specific video is going to be this widgets application. And don't panic if you're on Windows or Mac. Yes, this program will run on Windows, Mac, or Linux. I'm currently on Linux. It doesn't matter where you compile and run this. It'll just work. We're going to cover some core concepts in this video. First, the basics of, well, you guessed it, a widget application. And you notice how all these elements are nice and neat on the screen. This is called a layout. So when we resize our application, it automatically resizes with us. And we've got some interaction. For example, I can key in an age here, hit calculate, boom. And we can calculate an age in cat ears. Or I can select, say, dog. or mice. You notice how the multiplier is changing as I select a different animal. So we've got some instant feedback based off what the user's clicking here. While this is a very simple application, I do consider this kind of like the hello world to cute widgets. Now, a few key things before we dive in. I am going to unapologetically create QML applications, console applications, and so on through this course. So the next video may actually be this same program but in QML. And I always get the question out on udemy.com where I have some courses. Everyone says, well, you have the Qt6 core done, but you don't have the Qt6 widgets or QML done. Is it safe to take the Qt5? Absolutely. Uh, widgets and QML are pretty backwards compatible between 5 and 6. There are some caveats, and I've covered that in previous videos out on YouTube, but it's absolutely safe to take those courses and then upgrade later on. Let's dive in and take a look at how to make this application. Okay, because this is our first real widgets application, I'm going to do this from scratch. So you're going to see every single step of the process. Future videos though, I'm probably going to skip this and you're just going to start with a blank project. So I'm going to go to projects and new. And in case you're wondering, you don't have to do that. You can go to file, new file or project, but I just like clicking this little button. You're going to get a ton of projects. And remember what I said in the intro, which is unapologetically in the future, I may skip around, meaning we may do a console application. We may do widgets. We may do a cute quick slash QML. I'm just going to jump around, just have fun. But for this video, we want application cute, cute widgets application. Notice it says supported platforms desktop. That's right. So this will run on Mac, Linux, Windows, pretty much anywhere Qt will run. So we're going to choose, give it a name. And hit next. And you notice I'm going kind of slow here. Build system, I'm going to use CMake. You can still use QMake, but remember, QMake is going to go the way of the dinosaur. So I'm switching to CMake as is Qt6. Hit next. This is where things get confusing. You'll see this Q main window, widget, or dialog. Well, basically, let's talk about these real quick. So a main window would be like, well, cute creator in the background, a giant main window, where a widget, a widget is pretty much anything, like these individual little buttons down here. We don't want any of that. We want a simple dialog, which is, well, this little dialog you see on the screen actually is under the hood. So we want to go with Q dialog. It's going to generate a header and a source file. We want to make sure we generate that form as well. It's going to be dialog.ui. And this is an XML file. Hit next. Don't care about translating this app. And then choose the kit that's right for you. You may have multiple kits and you can even select multiple kits. I'm just going to go with what works for me. Just make sure it's a modern version of Qt. And hit finish. All right, now, when you get to this point, I would highly recommend you build and then you run. And if you have a problem running this thing, usually it's because you don't have OpenGL installed. So make sure OpenGL is installed, but you're gonna get this giant dialog. We're gonna fix that. You also see you got this terminal in the background. To do that, or I should say to fix that, you can go to projects run and then run in terminal uncheck that and you will no longer get that annoying little dialogue in the background or that I should say that command line. 
If you want the output, you can definitely have it, but I'm just gonna uncheck it just for the sake of this video. All right, so let's look at our project here. We've got an interesting structure. We've got our main file with our main function, and we're just going to make our application, which is going to do its event loop, something we've talked about in console land. But now we're doing a dialogue show. That's actually showing this dialogue. Ta-da! It looks pretty big, so let's scale this down. And then let's figure out how this thing works. So I'm going to scale that down. This is the what you see is what you get editor or the cute design editor. Let's go back to edit and you can see how it is a XML file under the hood. Now we also have this header and this implementation file. What's going on here? When we look at our main file, we're making a dialog from dialog H. Ta-da! This guy. And under the hood, what's really going on here is Qt's smart enough to realize that this XML file equates to this header file and the source file. So those three files come together to make our application beautiful. So let's go ahead and let's set up our interface. We're going to explain the coding in the next part here, but right now let's just focus on this interface. Now we have all of these little widgets that we can choose from. There's a lot of them. And if you don't want to like hunt and peck through here, cause it can get, get just kind of confusing. You can actually type them. So let's go ahead and I'm going to look for a label and I'm just going to drag a label on. It's just drag and drop. Now I'm going to look for what's called a line edit. If you're coming from like .NET or something, this is like a text box. See, very simple, very easy to work with. You can just drag it around. Now I want a few of these, so I can either continue dragging or dropping, or I can just do what I call the old copy and paste. So I've got a few of these and let's go ahead and fill in this label. Let's call this value. And if you're wondering, you just double click on it and then you can start typing. Multiplier and double click and let's call this result. If you don't like the whole double click thing, you can just select it and then go down over here to our properties. And then you can just either hunt and peck, which I don't like, or you can actually filter it. Text is what's going on. So we could say, ta -da, text. See how it makes it nice and easy to find. I actually love doing that. But you can see each widget has a ton, and I mean a ton of properties. So this little inspector here gives you a lot of information. And of course, it's depending on what you have selected. And you have this guy over here, which tells you, hey, this is what you have selected. So just a simple way of navigating here. So we're going to grab all of those. You notice how it highlights them all here. We could have done the same thing. Just press shift and click, and now we've got them. And I'm going to copy and paste that using control C, control V. And we want type. Now remember, we want a drop down or what's called a combo box. And you can absolutely hunt and peck for it in here. I don't like the hunt and peck method, so I'll just say combo box, drag and drop. And you can scale that out. Pretty neat, pretty easy to work with. I'm going to move this down and we're going to just take a push button and put it here. Now I'm going to name these. So I'm going to highlight each widget and name it appropriately. So this is going to be a CMB and let's call this type. And you can name them whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. You can even leave it line edit one, two, and three. But I'm gonna say LE and let's call this value. And then LE multiplier. And then LE result. Again, the object name is really whatever you want it to be, but this is how you're going to access that widget. Push button, I'm gonna call this BTN calc -late. Now, if you're an accountant, I'll give you a stupid accounting joke. It's I will calculator. Anyways, I won't quit my day job. So let's look at how we would set this into a layout because right now, if we were to expand and contract this, you know, move it around, nothing really happens. And we can actually do what's called clipping, which is really bad. We don't want to do that. So we're going to highlight 
what we want or we could have done the you know shift click method over here and we're going to put it into a layout and that's where this little toolbar up here comes in handy the icons are pretty self-descriptive but we have the horizontal vertical splitters we'll talk about in another video and then the grid so i'm just going to go ahead and go to the grid and when you click it it automatically puts it in there and as that layout resizes it resizes all the widgets inside of it pretty cool huh now you notice how I have the dialog itself selected. You can tell by these little handles off the edge. I'm going to select that, and I'm going to do the vertical. So it's going to take it and just put it vertically. Pretty neat, huh? Now, I don't like that button taking the entire space. So we're going to put a spacer in here, and I'm going to show you how to break a layout. So if we take the spacer and we try to put it in here, that blue line shows us where it's going to go, and it doesn't really work the way you'd expect. So we're going to select our dialog, and we're going to click this little break layout, which just does exactly that. It breaks the layout. We can then just drag and drop, move those around, highlight these guys, and we're going to put these next to each other horizontally. Now we can select our form and do vertical, and it works the way we expect it to. From here, everything just works. It's actually pretty stinking cool. I love this. So let's go ahead and save this. And it's called a what you see is what you get editor because, well, what you see is what you're going to get when you run this. You can see here is our little application with no code behind it whatsoever. And we can, you know, scale it, resize it. Pretty cool, huh? Let's flip into code land and let's start banging out the code. If you're intimidated, don't worry. The code for this is actually fairly minimal. We're going to include one thing. We're going to use a map. And if you skip my previous videos, I highly suggest you go back and watch. But what is a map? It is a key value pair. So we're going to say QMap. And this is a template class, so we have to give it a template. We're going to say string and int. So this is going to line up with the name of the animal, like dog, cat, fish, with the multiplier, you know, five, seven, whatever. And let's go ahead and call this M types. Again, there's a million different ways to do this. Whatever coding convention you use, make sure you use it. But don't modify any of this other stuff. You know, she got this UI dialog pointer. What is this thing? Well, it's pretty much under the hood. Qt is going to load that XML file and create a bunch of objects. So when you get to this point, I would highly recommend you give it a good build. Because if you don't, you're going to have a hard time later. And I'll explain once we get there. But I'm going to give that a good build. So what's happening in the background is Qt is actually building all the little things it needs to actually allow us to access things inside the user interface. Remember I said that because there'll be a time where it won't work and you're going to go, why is it not working? All right, so let's go into our layout here and we want to do two things. We need signals and slots. Now we could type these out. I hate typing it out. Or we could just go in here and find our widget our combo box, for example, right click and go to slot. We get a whole bunch of things to choose from here, but the main takeaway is what we want to do is when the current index changes, meaning when the user selects something, we want to know. So I'm going to go down to current index change. Notice there's two of these. We want the int version, not the Q string, the int. I found this one isn't really reliable for what I work on, and this one always fires off. You can double click or hit OK, and boom, there is our slot. If you get that annoying out of line definition, just save and then it'll kind of go away on its own. And in here, you see we have this private slots on CMB type current and exchange. Notice this is a special, special way of doing it. This is what's called an auto connection. So cute in the background knows that the on underscore. So you have whenever this widget does something, then this slot's called. It's kind of screwy the way that works, but it's actually pretty, pretty interesting and easy once you get it down. We're going to do the same thing for button. Right click, go to slot. And we want clicked. Now you'll notice you have a hierarchy of controls here. You have the, I'm just going to do this. Our base is a Q object, which is a Q widget, which is a Q abstract button. So
So everything is a Q object, but everything on the screen is a Q widget, which of course inherits Q object. And we are working with a button. So if you're ever confused about that, what we're going to do clicked, hit OK, and we get the same thing on the button clicked. So it's pretty intuitive, right? Especially if you're coming from like .NET, Java, something like that. You can see whenever this combo box, current index change, or whenever the button is actually clicked, we can do something. Again, give it a good build just to make sure you don't have any little gremlins. And once you get to that point, you are actually good to go with the rest. So we're in the implementation file, and this is where we're going to start working with that map. But you'll notice right here, UI setup UI. What is this thing? This, if you flip back, is a pointer to the dialogue. That's right. It's a pointer back to this guy, basically. Let's go ahead and demonstrate what I mean here. If you type UI, notice, boom, there are all of our widgets that we put into our user interface. Pretty neat, huh? So like there's our button. And then we've got our layouts that we did automatically through the designer. We've got our labels and then we've got our line edits. This is just really cool. Now, if you did that and this is blank or nothing pops up, this is what I mean by remember this moment because this is what I'm talking about. If you didn't build, that means Qt doesn't know all of this stuff exists. So if you do this and like it comes up blank, just simply save, build. And then once the build is complete, then magically it will start working again like that. All right. One thing you should know is this needs to come first. If you try doing it something backwards, you're going to probably crash your app. So if you're trying to work with your application and it's crashing on startup, usually this is the reason why. So if we F1 on that, display the help file, it's not very helpful, but basically it says sets up the user interface for the specified widget. So basically, this is going to set up this entire dialogue for us to use. That's got to happen first. All right, let's close that. And let's just go ahead and fill in our combo box. Again, I did say the code is going to be minimal, so don't worry. So we're going to say our map. We're going to go ahead and insert, and we want to insert a fish. And the fish is going to be a multiplier of two, meaning basically, Every human year is like two fish years kind of thing. And we're just going to do the old copy paste. We're going to say cat. And I'm just winging this. I didn't actually go out and Google. I have no idea what the ratio to dog years to human years is or anything like that. But we're just going to say fish are two, cat are seven, dog is five. And let's just add one more. Let's say mice. And I have no idea. I'm just going to say 15. I don't think mice live that long. Somebody out there a comment I have no idea but now what we're going to do is we're going to tie our map that we just filled in with our user interface so whenever you think you're going to do something with the user interface literally type UI and you can hit period on the keyboard and it's going to automatically convert that to the point so it's going to point to the widgets and you notice these are all pointers we're working with here so we need our combo box and then we want to add items now you can do add item individual, but we're going to do items multiple because we don't want to waste our time. And we want to add in, you guessed it, the keys. And that should take care of the casting for us automatically. Spoiler alert, this is a queue list of strings, which under the hood should be cast automatically to a queue string list, but you may have to cast those manually if you're having problems with this part. And then we're going to say UI.CMB type, and we want to go ahead and set the current index. The current index is what's currently selected, and under the hood, this is an array, zero based array. So we're going to get the item or the number in there automatically. But we're going to set it to zero, meaning the first item in our array. Let's go ahead and save and let's run this and see what this looks like. All right, there we go. It's already got this list here. And if we click our list, nothing happens. We're going to fix that right now. But I want to demonstrate something. We're going to take this and move it here. Let's go ahead and build that and see what happens. 
we get a good build. Let's see if it runs. Oh, nope. Program has unexpectedly finished. You wouldn't believe how many emails I get on why does my program crash on startup. Get a magic marker and write it on the back of your hand. You have to set up the user interface before you modify the user interface. All right, so if we rebuild this and run it again, it should work just fine. But I'm just going to demonstrate. Rebuild and run, and ta-da, magically it's not crashing anymore. All right, so let's go ahead and flesh in the code for our index change and our button click. So first things first, we're not going to use this guy right here. So I want to get rid of that warning. I'm going to say Q unused. And it just simply gets rid of that warning. Now what we want to do is get the multiplier here. And so I'm just going to say int m equals from our maps, we want the value, which is going to take that key value pair and get the value from the key. So now that we got that, we want to get whatever key we have. So I'm going to say UI, CMB type, our combo box, we want to just get the current text. So it's just going to be catfish dog, whatever's displayed on the screen, right? And then we want to say UI, Le multiple, that almost sounds French, le multiplier. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and do set text. Forgive my horrible French accent. I don't know much French at all. I think I know how to say like l'addition s'il vous plaît and a few other things like mademoiselle and monsieur and things like that, but my accent is probably atrocious. So if you're French speaking, please forgive me. So what we're doing here is we're basically saying in the user interface, we're gonna grab our multiplier, that line edit, and we're gonna set the text to the string representation of whatever the multiplier is. So let's walk through this super, super quick here. Notice how period on the keyboard has betrayed us. So we have to actually type that in. There we go. So we're saying when the current index changes or when the user clicks that combo box, we're gonna ignore that index using Q unused. Then we want to get the integer from our key value pair based off the current text, cat, dog, fish, whatever. And then we're gonna say user interface, the multiplier, we're gonna set the text, meaning we're gonna actually set the text value to the string representation of that integer. You have to use Q string number. So we're converting from an int to a Q string. Let's go ahead and test that. We're gonna run this real quick. Now you notice how it's there automatically because in our constructor we are setting the current index which is firing off that signal slot connection right here. So it's automatically doing it. And if I click this, you see it goes 15, two, five, and so on. Pretty cool, huh? Now we're gonna get this calculate button working. And you notice how when I click it, nothing happens. Go ahead and get that running. Just gonna clean up a little screen real estate here. All right, so first things first, we're gonna say bool. We're just going to assume everything is not okay. <laughs> but what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert from uh, a text to a number, and that does not always succeed. And that's why we have gotta be a little bit careful. So I'm gonna show you how to test that. So we're gonna say int, and we're gonna say v for value equals our user interface. And we want line edit value. Remember, your naming convention really doesn't matter. You could just do whatever. And we want the text, and that's going to return a Q string, and we want to do a two int. Now, this is going to take a pointer to a bool, and you can give it a base. We're going to just stay with base 10, but I want to just say, okay, here's our bool, and I want a true or false. So what happens here is it's going to evaluate this and say, can we convert it to an int? If so, this goes to the integer value. If not, it's gonna set it to zero. You can actually look this up in the help file. Just highlight that in F1. However, if it fails, it's gonna be a zero. Either way, we're gonna get a true false on our bool so we can actually evaluate and see what happened. So I wanna say if everything is not okay, we wanna do something with our user interface. So we're gonna say le value, we're gonna go ahead and set that text to zero. 
So if they didn't enter a number, if they just didn't enter anything, we want to be able to put a number there to let the user know, hey, we know you forgot to do something. I'm going to do the old copy and paste. We're going to do the same thing with the multiplier. And I'm going to say le multiplier. So why are we doing this? Well, I'm going to level with you. Users cannot be trusted. <laughs> you should know that by now, but especially when you get into graphical programming, most users don't understand computers and they just have a tendency to click buttons and cause all sorts of errors. So you want to do some sort of defensive programming and make sure there's at least some value or it's a value that you can work with. Then we're going to say int r for our return val equals our value times our multiplier. And then we just simply update the UI. So I'm say UI dot le return. I should say le result set text. And this is going to be a string representation of that number. So I'm going to say Q string number and voila. All right, let's give this a good build and make sure we didn't goof anything up. Okay, are you excited? This is that glorious moment where we see if our first program actually works. So we're going to hit run. All right, first thing I want to do is I want to see if we can break this. Notice I have not entered anything in here. I'm just going to hit calculate. Boom. This is our zeros right here where we're saying, hey, it did not convert to an int. So we're just going to set that to zero. And we can just enter some other value. And it just works. It doesn't crash our application or anything. So let's enter a valid value. Let's say you are, hmm, say you're 34 years old and let's just select dog. So the multiplier is five, hit calculate, boom. You are 170 dog years, or let's say fish, 68, cat, 238, or mice. You are an extremely old mouse. I would dare say in mice years, you are immortal. So this video really hammered home some core concepts. First off, how to, interact with the user interface, how to play around with some layouts, and how to do a bit of defensive programming here. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you. Smash that like and subscribe button. The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.